In this video, I'm going to show you how you can publish an electronic file format. This is similar to doing a PDF, but AutoCAD's version is called a DWF, a .dwf file. DWF stands for Drawing Web Format. So this is something that we would do instead of printing a piece of paper, we would do it electronically, and then you can email it or send it electronically. So we're going to start off. I've got my drawing open here. The first thing we need to do is go into our page setup, and we're actually going to set the printer. Instead of being whatever printer you would normally use, we're going to make it a printer that is a DWF, a DWF printer. So a couple of ways to get here. We're going to go into the page setup. I'm going to right click here on uh, the layout tab that I'm in, and I get this option that says page setup manager. And then I can say modify, and I'm in my page setup. This is similar. Hopefully you recognize what this looks like. This is the same as your plot uh, screen window that pops up. I can also click on this layout tab up here. You only see that layout when you're actually in a layout. So you have to activate a layout tab down here to see the layout uh, ribbon up here. I'm going to, once I've clicked on that, then I get an option here for page setup. So two ways to do the exact same thing. Doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, I'm going to come in here and modify the existing one. So back to the same screen I was at. For our printer or plotter, well, normally you would choose the printer that you have in your classroom or the printer that you have at home or work. We're going to pull this down and we're actually going to choose this guy right here, dwf6eplot.pc3. AutoCAD should come with this. So everybody, anybody who has AutoCAD installed should have this plotter as an option available to them. Once you've set that plotter, ANSI Full Bleed. We're doing an a size sheet of paper, which is 8.5 by 11, but if you were to pull this down, there's all kinds of uh, sheet sizes that you see. When you see the word Full Bleed, what that means is this little dash here that is your print margin, it'll go all the way to the edge of the page. A printer isn't able to do that, to do a full bleed, So, um, but since we're not doing it to an actual printer, we're doing it electronically, it'll take that margin and bump it all the way out so we can go all the way to the edge of the page. So ANSI Full Bleed, dwif 6 eplotpc 3 Also make sure that your plot style is set to monochrome. That's gonna let it print in black and white. So those are the three things you need to check here. You've got your plotter, you've got your paper size, and you've got it set to monochrome. I'm gonna say okay. Won't necessarily look like any too much has changed. Uh, I'll go ahead and close, and you can see here that eh, it shifted off a little bit, that full bleed. You, you're welcome to uh, just use the move command, and you can just grab this whole thing and just kind of move it around a little more if you want. So that looks good. And notice that dashed line, that print margin, is just totally gone. It's going all the way to the edge. So I'm ready to uh, publish this thing. So normally what you would have done is click on the printer icon. You could plot, control P or whatever. We're gonna do it a little differently now though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the output tab. So output, and then what to export. This says current layout. If you have multiple layouts that you want to publish, and we do, multiple layouts on our final capstone projects, the toe stop in the cabin. So you will want to say all layouts in that case. Um, but current layout, if you just have one layout, that's you could just leave it at current or just get in the habit of saying all layouts. Uh, page setup would be current. That's what I just did. I just did my page setup. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this down arrow where it says export. And I'm going to choose the option for DWF. I could also export a PDF here. Uh, PDFs, people are very familiar with PDFs, but I'll show you what's really cool about a DWF file. It's a lot more powerful than just a PDF uh, when you're working within AutoCAD. So save as a DWF. Let's just come over here and I'll just call this bracket dimensions check print. That's fine. I'm gonna check this option right here that says open in a viewer when done. There is a viewer that you can get for free. It's called design review. And so you can download Autodesk Design Review, and I recommend that you do that before you start publishing DWIFs. And uh, that is what you're gonna need to be able to view the DWIF once you've published it. And then also uh, I'll show you um, how you can uh, view the DWIF. There's a way to mark up the DWIF, which is what your instructor will do. And then there's a way to load the DWIF back into your drawing. So. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and check that box. The nice thing about this is you want to you want to say open in the viewer because you would never walk over to a printer 
not look at what you just printed out and then hand it in to your instructor or give it to your boss. You would always look at what, you, what it is that you've just printed or published before you hand it in. And you'll notice things like, oops, it's not monochrome or oops, somehow my visible layer didn't print or I was missing something. Oh, I don't see any of my dimensions or whatever. Look at it before you submit it to your instructor. And this kind of forces you to do that. So open in viewer when done. And we're just going to give it a name, dwarf file. There's really not much else that you need to do here. It does give you another option here. You get a second chance at deciding if you want to do a current layout, which is just it's only going to make one dwarf with one page. Or if you say all layouts, it will make a dwarf one dwarf out of all of your layouts. I'm going to click in here to options just so you can see what's going on here. Most of them are grayed out for me, but you can um, direct the location where you want to save that DWIF. So it's important to know where your DWIF is saving. Mine is just going straight into my documents. Um, you can, uh, it's going to prompt me for a name or I could specify a name right here. Layer information, do include layer information and I'll show you what that means when I when we go into the DWIF viewer. I'll be able to turn on and off your layers just, just to make sure things are uh, on the right layer. Merge control, we're just gonna leave that at the default here. And block information, you don't have to include block information. You could, but we don't need to. So we're just gonna leave, we're really, really just gonna leave all of this at the defaults. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like there. And file, multi-sheet file. Um, this used to give us an option to change it. It's grayed out now. But it's gonna, what it's going to do is if you chose that option to say all layouts, it's going to make one sheet with multiple, I'm sorry, one dwarf with multiple sheets in it. And that is actually what you want to do. Otherwise, if that said single sheet file, you would end up having you know, if you had maybe three layouts in your drawing, it would produce three separate dwifts. It would still do all layouts, but it would make three single sheet dwifts, um, which is usually not at all what you want to have happen. So multi-sheet is good. So if I had it set to, you know, if I had multiple layouts and I came over here and said all layouts, this is telling me it would make one dwif with multiple sheets in it. So I'll say okay here. I really didn't have to change anything in that. But uh, we've got documents, we'll just put it right in here. Um, even if you had specified a location here, um, you can see I can still come in here and choose where I want to, uh, where I want to put it at that point. So um, that's it. We're going to go ahead and say save. Takes a little while. And then boom, you see, sometimes if it's a bigger drawing or if it's 3D or you have multiple pages, it might take a little longer for this to happen. But it says plot and publish complete, no errors or warnings found. If I look, uh, actually it came up on my other screen, so I'm going to move this over. This is, remember we said open in viewer, this is Autodesk Design Review. So this is what Design Review looks like and this is what your final PDF looks like. Um, if you, if you aren't using an educational version, it would not have that um, stamp around it, but it's fine if you do when you're in class. So this is what design review looks like. It did plot in monochrome because I told it it needs to. I can zoom in and out. I can pan just the same way that we did in AutoCAD using your middle and telemouse wheel. If I come over here to layers, you can see all the layers. I can turn off my hidden layer. I can turn off my, ooh, let's go visible. You can see all the different layers that, um, that somebody has done the drawing in. And that was the thing, remember, we gave, we gave permission to see those lay layers. I'm also going to show you how you can find that file. Remember, I saved it into my home directory. So I'm going to just move this file um, ex uh, explorer over here. And I'm going to show you right here. I'm in my documents. And there it is, dimensions, uh, bracket dimensions, check print. And I can see it's an auto, auto desk DWIF document. So there we go. And when it comes time for you to send your file into your instructor or to your employer or whoever it is that you're sending your file to, this is the file that you will attach. You will not attach the DWG file that you did your drawing in in AutoCAD. You will attach the DWF, the DWIF file. All right, in the next video, I'm going to show how you can use Design Review to mark up your drawing and communicate with the person uh, who's done the drawing and just do some red lines and communication back and forth. So stay tuned for the next video.